Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kogish here with my good friend John Bush, who I've known for a long time, going back to, I guess, gee, Midwest Liberty Fest, Midland, Odessa, Texas, back in 2012, 13, 11, maybe? No, it was 2011, going way back. And I always, I always love introducing John. I've interviewed him a number of times as the guy who uh, cured my constitutionalism with his talk at that particular conference, tipping some sacred cows, as he called it. But today... We've got some, uh, so, some other sacred cows to tip, and John's got something on his mind that uh, is, is something I think a lot of people in the libertarian anarchist community are, uh, are eager to talk about, but somewhat afraid of, and John brings a unique perspective. So I'm really excited to hear what is inspiring him to examine the dark side of human sexuality. So, um, several years ago, I took Molly for the first time in like a decade, and some old memories came up, and one of those was a repressed memory of um, of like a light molestation that took place in my childhood, and it was very blurry, and I couldn't really pinpoint exactly what took place. So I did further exploration of that. More recently, I took ayahuasca for the first time, and I thought that for those not familiar with ayahuasca, ayahuasca has a tendency to bring out. Um, darker things, suppress things, and basically just strike the radical root of some of the problems that people are facing. And that's not what happened during the ayahuasca experience. I didn't have a big revelation and a big insight about what exactly happened to me. But I did do a lot of thinking and meditating and realize that there's a lot of sexual trauma that takes place in our world. And the big problem with that sexual trauma is, because, is that it it's not just an isolated incident, there's a tendency, as most trauma, where it's sexual, violent, assault, um, manipulation, PTSD, it's, it creates a, uh, a habit of recreating that cycle. And so if there's a child that was assaulted or molested or someone that was sexually assaulted, they are more likely to recreate that with their own children or with others, and this cycle continues and continues. And so when I was taking this ayahuasca trip, I realized that all human beings are hurt, traumatized individuals that are simply seeking answers and seeking, and seeking peace and truth. And I had a really big insight that at the end of the day, regardless of all this harm and trauma that's been imparted upon us or that we've imparted upon others, we're all perfect exactly how we are right now. With all the pain, with all the anxiety, with all the anger, with all of it, we're perfect as we are. And if we can accept ourselves as we are, and if we can accept what's happened to us in the past, and if we can accept what we've done to others, and forgive ourselves and forgive others, I think that's the biggest thing we can do in order to break this cycle of violence and assault. So I think the, the general subject of violence perpetuating is one that is, is pretty well understood by libertarians. I mean, we see that, that, that hopefully it's something that we're progressing past, that with every cycle it gets less and less. But in this case, it's this, the sexual trauma, I think we're inclined to say, oh, well, that's, it's, not, it's not violence or it's not the real, it's not, you know, I mean, it can be, obviously, and I'm not, I don't mean to discount that, but you sort of separated it from, from other assaults or other, you know, you know, other violent transgressions. And it has the, a very similar dynamic. I mean, it's the same fundamental dynamic because you are, your, your personhood is being violated. I, I think that should be included in the concept of what is violence. But when we talk about it in, you know, in the broader political context, what is the significance of this? Well, um, I think one of the big differences for libertarians, maybe why this sexual repression and sexual assault, sexual trauma isn't as important, because we tend to focus on the political violence. And governments aren't engaging in a whole lot of sexual assault. Now the TSA does, of course. and there's a lot Total of, sexual assault. There's a lot of terrible stuff that happens in prisons, for example. But uh, the sexual traumas, it's like a private thing, and people are really ashamed of things that take place. And like this is extremely vulnerable for me to share with your audience. Um, but I think it's important for us to, to focus on this. So I, I think that it isn't as big of a topic in this community or any community really, because there's a lot of shame that's involved with it. But it does, it is extremely detrimental, especially for a child. It basically robs them of their innocence. And I think it leads to in society, both because of this sexual trauma being imparted upon people, but then there's also like a root cause. And one of the things that I meditated on during my ayahuasca experience was like, well, where is this coming from? and Disney kept on popping into my head. And of course, Disney has all sorts of sexual imagery 
and their videos like sex and there's phalluses and the preacher has a boner and the little mermaid for example and disney also engages in trauma-based mind control with their britney spear types and um miley cyrus is a great example and there's a newer young woman what they do is they get the children to look at these people as idols when they're on the disney shows when they're in their pre-teens and when they're young they look up to them and then all of a sudden when they reach 13 16 18 they become these really sexual beings and not in a grounded spiritual sexual way but in a hyper sexualized commercialism hyper sexualized and that and of course the girls follow them and so on and so forth so I think one thing that we can do as a society as whole as a whole which will help to lead towards more political freedom is to take sexuality more seriously and realize that it is a sacred practice because at the end of the day even if you're trying not to um, children can be born of that and I have two kids of myself and there's nothing more impactful for my life and changing the way that I think and the way that I view the world than having these kids and so we need to realize and I'm not saying that we shouldn't go have there's nothing wrong with you know I don't, I don't call people sluts or whatnot there's nothing wrong with taking pleasure in life but I do think that we need to honor our bodies and honor the bodies of others and do it in more of a respectful way than I see taking place in, in mass society so what's your hope then if people get that awareness and they're, they're able to, to shift that attitude towards sex you know how do you see that reverberating in, in a way that uh, addresses the problem of sexual trauma because obviously the guy who was abused horribly as a child who is now a pedophile rapist is not going to be affected by Britney Spears or Miley Cyrus coming off the air yeah I think at the end of the day one thing that we all have power over right we don't have to have society change we don't have to have politics change who's in office doesn't have to change in order for us to heal ourselves and to focus not on the political freedom but the personal freedom so I think the biggest thing that we could do to change this is to focus on healing and as I said to recognize if something happened to you or if something happened to others or if even you've done something to someone else to recognize that to accept it to not hate yourself for it to not be ashamed and to forgive yourself and even to forgive the aggressor that attacked upon you because like I said this is all a series of cycles and if we can have a compassionate heart we'll understand that the person that's abusing others was abused themselves and we can feel we can feel sorry for them and feel hurt for them and have compassion for them so I think if we all focus on healing internally that will then expand outwardly um, and we can heal the world and, and and have more peace and more happy healthy human beings well, thank you so much for uh, for being vulnerable with us and for bringing this topic into the conversation. Obviously, it's inherent in our philosophy that if you believe in self ownership, any violation of the, the, that is an ethical transgression that needs to be opposed. And oftentimes, we get caught up in the political side and we miss the cultural, the psychological, the the deeper aspects of that. And and I'm always I'm always blown away by this man's perspective and his open-mindedness and his integrity. So, John, thank you very much, brother. Is there anything that you want people to know about how to find out more about you online? Um, I sell natural health products these days, mybravebotanicals.com. We sell Kratom and CBD. Kratom helps a lot of people to get off of uh, their addiction and dependency on pharmaceuticals. So it helps people with anxiety, with energy, mental focus. So check that out, mybravebotanicals.com. And I just want to thank you because uh, you've been a selfless, tireless activist for so long, and I know that You've been through a lot, and you put your your freedom on the line to help spread freedom and, and help others. So I, I really appreciate your dedication to the cause. Thank you, brother.